This is something that your dog will never, ever do. I guarantee you. You got a dog, I don't care what what breed it is. You got a cat, any pet, got chickens. This is something that your critters at your house will never, ever do. Your dog will never ask itself, why am I here? Your dog will never enter into an existential crisis where it wonders, do I have a purpose for living? I mean, you see your dog, right? Sometimes it just kind of lays around, sleeps, does nothing. Your cat, that's about all the cats do. And what is a cat thinking? What's your dog thinking? They're not thinking about their existence. They, they don't do that. Oh, that is something that is uniquely human. We think about those things. Why, why did God put me here? Why did nature put me here, depending on what your perspective is? Um, people with autism seem to ask that question more often than anyone else. But with that thought in mind, keep in mind that thinking about why you are here is uniquely human, and the more you think about it, apparently the more human you are. So when people with autism or Asperger's syndrome are thinking about, why do I exist? Why am I here? What is my purpose in the scheme of things? If I were to, or if I had never been born, how would that have negatively affected the planet? Or would it positively? positively affected humanity you know we we wonder about those things we mull those things over in our minds but do we have an answer to it i mean it's a good thing to be uh i don't want to say superhuman but if these things are going through your mind that does suggest that yeah you you are very 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 human well what's the answer um I got a hundred of them, but, you know, we'll be here all day if we went through all a hundred, so let's just do seven. As a person with Asperger's syndrome, as a person with high-functioning autism, or just autism, why? Why are you here? Why do you exist? Number one is this. I exist to be objective and uh, honest. Now, you can just say that to yourself. I exist to be objective. I exist to be honest. Now, why do we say that? We say that for this reason. People ask, why am I here? Or what is my calling in life? Or why is it, what is it rather that I am supposed to do? When I was a pastor years ago, people would ask, what is God's calling on my life? And the answer is, well, what, what are you good at? You know, what, what is it that you excel in? Now, you may not be the best at it, but you, you know, there are things that you do better than other things. So whatever those things are, that is your calling in life. So what are you good at? Well, if you have Asperger syndrome, if you are autistic, high functioning, high functioning autism, then one of the things you are good at is being objective. One of the things you are good at, I mean, really good at, is being honest. Now, keep in mind, this is just my opinion. You take it for what it's worth, but I believe. The objective is to be objective. That is to be as unbiased as you possibly can be. And people with Asperger's syndrome tend to be objective. That doesn't mean we're always right. I mean, we could be objectively extremely wrong because we have bad information, right? But still, we try to be balanced. You know what? What Aspies are good at? They're good at being jurors, you know, sitting on a jury because they're very honest. They're very objective. They'll listen to all the sides and weigh things in balance, and they don't have... By and large, I mean, we do, but we don't have that bias, you know, that confirmation bias where it's got to be our way because, well, it's our team. And if the guy on our team commits a foul and the, the referee calls him on it, uh, well, the referee's obviously wrong, right? That's the way most people look at it. But a person with Asperger's syndrome, a person with autism will see the referee call a foul on the guy on our team, and we say, well, yeah, he did commit a foul. People get mad at us for doing that because they see that as a lack of loyalty. Really, we're very loyal, but we're loyal to the truth. We are loyal to being objective. So why are you here? As a person who has autism, you could just say this. I exist to be objective. I exist to be honest. Number two is this. 
I exist to be straightforward. Not exactly the same as being honest, but it's very related to it. Some people like to use the um, expression shoot from the hip. I never liked that expression because uh, people use it to uh, excuse being obnoxious, you know. But uh, effectively, that's what we're doing. And what I'm saying is people with autism don't tend to play head games. We don't even know how to play head games because we're really not good at reading people. And by the way, trying to figure out what your place is you know, in, in, in uh, uh, the universe, it's not just what you're good at. It's also what you're not good at. So you are not called to be um, a mind reader. You know, somebody, not mind reader, but somebody who reads nonverbal cues, nonverbal language, and thereby determines what somebody is thinking. You know, it's a form of mind reading, but not literally. So, yeah, we're not called to do that. That's not our purpose in life. Uh, we don't play head games. We're not people who are manipulative. We are not people who uh, take advantage of other people. I mean, I say we're not. I mean, obviously, we do on occasion. We do those things. But by and large, we tend to be very straightforward. That's, you know, kind of like being objective, kind of like being honest. But when we're dealing with people or anything... We're just really straightforward. That's what you're called to do. That's your point in life. That's why you exist. Now, you can say this, too. You can say it with me. Uh, uh, I exist to be trustworthy. I exist to be trustworthy. One of the strong points of people with, with autism is you can trust them. You know, if they give their word, they give their word. If they say they will be there, uh Chances are they'll be there. I mean, hindrances come up, and sometimes people change their mind. We all have flaws. But typically, if you want a job done, give it to a person with autism. And if he or she actually knows how to do it, uh, they'll get the job done. One of the reasons it's good to hire people with autism, high-functioning autism, is they tend to show up on time. You give them a job, they'll do the job. Uh, they won't... Uh, you know, when it's time to leave, they're ready to go. They take a break, give them a 15-minute break. They don't take 16 minutes or 20 minutes. They take 15 minutes. They are very trustworthy. Uh, they're not going to steal out of the storeroom, out of the stock room. They're not going to steal things. They're not going to steal time. They're not going to stand around and talk with coworkers. You know, do people actually do that? Yeah. I mean, you know, when I was a manager in a restaurant, um, People do that all the time, just stand around and talk, you know. I mean, you do have work to do, right? I mean, you're not being paid to stand there and spend time inside the store. You're paid to work. That's what people with autism do. So why do I exist? You know, this is you speaking to you. I exist to be trustworthy. Number four is this. Say it with me. I exist to be creative. I exist to be creative. Virtually every... Aspie, I know, very few exceptions. They just have this thing about being creative. That's not saying they're all great artists, but they figure things out. Now, I'm not the best at that, but I, I enjoy figuring things out. Sometimes I'm slower than everybody else, and sometimes I'll ask advice, which, by the way, is not a bad thing. That's one of the reasons we have YouTube. It's kind of like the world's uh, ultimate how-to uh, program. If you want to know how to do something, there's there's a YouTube video about it. Just click on there. You know, so sometimes we need help. But by and large, we exist so that the world will have somebody who is innovative and creative. Stop and think about it. We've talked about this, I think, before. Well, I know we have. Um, virtually everything that's ever been invented was invented by somebody who was creative and somebody who was innovative. That is the strong point of people with autism. That doesn't mean that everything invented was invented by an Aspie or invented by somebody with autism. But there's a good chance that it was. So that is why you exist. So you were thinking, maybe I have no reason for existing. Oh, you got all kinds of reasons. And again, I came up with seven of them. Uh, actually, I think I came up with like a hundred of them, but, uh, you know, we're not going to spend that much time. So, uh, I exist to be creative. Say this with me. I exist to be centered. I exist to be centered. Somebody has to be the adult in the room. 
that's where the people with autism come in because we tend to, okay we have meltdowns but outside of that we tend not to be we don't emote we don't to be highly emotional you know the thing that i like to talk about where there's a you're watching a ball game and everyone gets emotionally involved in it they cheer and boo and whatever and Aspies, you know, people with autism, they just sit there. I mean, we're watching the game, you know, and yeah, we're excited. You can just tell by the expression on our face. We may raise our eyebrows now and again. We need people like that. You know, the planet needs, uh, see, the planet people need individuals who have a centered perspective, who have their feet on the ground, who are, as we said earlier, viewing life and events very objectively, not with bias, not with um, being influenced by others. And I'm not saying we can't be influenced by others or that we can't be biased. We're just less likely to because, well, we tend, as we said, tend to be objective. Therefore, we can be centered. Somebody needs to be the adult in the room. And when everyone is fighting and fussing back and forth, like they do whenever you have a group of people, there's going to be a fight because that's what people do. We all have egos, right? And when our ego is wounded or bruised, uh, we want to go through a healing process. And we think the way to heal our bruised ego is to bruise the ego of the person who bruised our ego. That's the way people think. And the person with autism sees all this. You're not solving anything. Come on. You know, that's the way we think. And that is our purpose for being in the room. That is our purpose for being on the planet, among other things. All right, so number six, say this with me. I exist to encourage and to motivate. I exist to encourage and to motivate. Now, what I'm saying is this. We have a type of empathy that, uh, speaking of people with autism, that others for some reason, they don't like to recognize it, but we have effective empathy. And when people see us not having um, cognitive empathy, you know, the thing where we can't read, most of us can't read uh, nonverbal cues. We don't have this thing where we stand up and cheer, boo with the ball game. They see that as a lack of empathy. But when it comes to effective empathy or affection, we, we, we excel at that. At least that's been my experience, my observation. And here I am pushing 70 years old, and uh, I've learned a thing or two over these many decades, and I'm just sharing with you some of the things I've learned. And one of the things I've learned over the decades is when people leave comments on my channel and they give it a thumbs up, that helps the algorithm so that we get more views. And I've seen that happen just this week several times, where the views on uh, our videos on our channels are, you know, going up. I got two channels, by the way. So we exist to encourage other people because we have objective affection. So we can see the real genuine problem. We can see the real genuine hurt, emotional hurt that people are experiencing. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that we have been there and we have gone through it and we have done it. You know, again, I'm pushing 70 years old. I've been there. Now, I have not had the exact experiences that you have had, but whatever stage you are in life, a child, a teenager, a young adult, middle-aged adult, older adult, um, yeah, I've been there. So I have, you know, I, 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 I walked in your shoes. I walked a mile in your shoes. Different experiences, obviously. But I've been through that stage in life, so I just want to share with people what I have learned. That's effective empathy. And because of that, we can motivate others to hang in there and do what's right. Well, that's what this video is all about. It's all about motivating people. Understand that, yeah, you actually do not just have a purpose in life, a calling, as some people call it, but you got a lot of, I mean, a bunch of, you get a ton of them, probably more so than neurotypical people. Okay, what we said at the very onset, remember, of this presentation is the fact that you can stop and think about your purpose in life suggest that, uh, I don't want to say you're more human than others, but that's the way it appears, right? Because non-human critters don't think about these things. You know, I got a tree 
in my yard. I used to have a bunch of them, cut them all down. But I got a tree in my yard. Uh, it's a fir tree, what do they call it, evergreen Christmas tree thing. It doesn't think about why it exists. It's just there. That is uniquely human. So uh, we motivate ourselves when we stop and think about, you know, we, we have reasons to exist. We are here for a purpose, and we should motivate each other, encourage each other. As I like to say, instead of taking somebody down a peg or two, why don't we take them up a peg or two? Number seven is this. I exist to be accepting. This is closely related to what we just said. But uh, say it with me. I exist to be accepting. My purpose here is to accept other people. Doesn't matter who they are, what their quirks are. I see value in that person for the seven things that we have mentioned, but for other things. Why? Why do we do that? Well, again, part of it's kind of from born out of our experience because we're quirky, right? Other people see us as kind of odd. We know what it's like. And when we see somebody else who's kind of quirky or odd, and sometimes it's a bad kind of odd. I mean, some people are just uh, obnoxious. We may not like it, but we... We're more likely, I think, to, to overlook some of that the best we can, and we understand, okay, this is a human. He's got some kind of a problem. She's got some kind of a problem. We accept that. We may not like it, but, uh, hey, look, they're human, and uh, maybe they haven't had the opportunities to learn. Maybe they have a neurological problem where they can't learn. They're just this way, and we don't have to hate them. doesn't mean we have to like what they're doing. We don't have to hate them, but we, you know, we can accept them as they are. It's like a mean dog, you know, you don't have to hate the mean dog, you just stay away from it. So uh, another thing that comes to mind is um, social defeat. Virtually every Aspie, every person with autism has experienced social defeat. You're in a social group, doesn't matter what it is, at school, at work, at church, at family, at the club, uh, at the shopping mall. Do they still have shopping malls? Uh, I don't think they do. Uh, the ones in our town closed up, by and large. But, uh, you know, wherever you go, okay, grocery shopping. Sometimes you just social defeat because people are kind to others, but they're not kind to you because you, you're a space alien, they think. But we understand that, you know, because we've been through it. We've gone through it. We know what it's like to be rejected. Other people just simply cannot identify with that, and they think uh, the fact that we do identify with it is in itself kind of weird. So we can't, we can't win for losing, but what we can do is we can be accepting. We can overlook those quirks and those flaws. Two rectangles on the screen, you know what that means. That means that we can keep on talking. It's totally up to you. All you have to do is click on one of those two rectangles. we got dozens and dozens and dozens of videos. So our conversation together can keep on going. Let us know in the comment section. Has this been an encouragement to you? I'd really like to know. But if you don't want to hang out, hey, that's okay too. We'll see you all next time.